Here's a little study that we did on a person who attempted suicide before the study. So the university took him in because, and put him on a treatment because there wasn't a liability issue anymore or risk anymore. And this guy was highly suicidal. The yellow up here for medication use represents 35 extra strength Tylenol with coating a day. Still severe pain, severely suicidal, uh, high anxiety, high pain level. They put him on the entrainment, started to settle down really well, but they took him off and put him on TENS in case there was a placebo effect. He got worse, took him off the TENS, put him back on entrainment, started getting better and better and better. And right here though, he, he had been disabled from a back injury for five years. And his wife had run the show at, at home and so on, and all the financials and everything. But now he's kind of getting back into being functional. And then him and his wife had a big fight over um, how they were going to handle the family. So his anxiety and stuff went up a bit, and his pain went up, and the medication went up a bit. But look at his suicide ideation. It kept going down despite the family instability. OK, look at quality of life monitors. Everything was in the tank right here. Starts to really improve, especially hopefulness. Put them on tens, everything deteriorates. Put them back on entrainment. When the, when the family instability occurred, he's still getting more and more hopeful. I think that's the serotonin norepinephrine connection and probably a dopamine connection too, but we haven't studied dopamine. Uh, but pretty interesting, eh? Okay, now look at learning dis disabled boys. This is a uh, Carter and Russell study that was published in 1993, looking on the uh, Burke's behavior, anxiety, dependence, ego strength, coordination, intellect, academics, attention, a sense of excessive personal suffering, and anger control. And you can see here, after uh, 40 sessions, how much, this is, this is teacher ratings, how much those children improved. Especially when you get into things like anger control. I mean, do you want to manage a class that's full of anger, angry kids, angry boys? Especially? No, you don't want that. So big improvements in the classroom. Uh, this was uh, differences. This is Micheletti's study. He looked at controls, Ritalin, entrainment, and then combined entrainment and Ritalin. And you can see here that the controls on Raven IQ, Peabody Picture Vocabulary Test, Math, Reading, and Spelling on the RAT, uh, that's the Wide Range Achievement Test. Yeah, it kind of washes out. The Ritalin group showed some improvement on IQ, some improvement on the Peabody Picture Vocabulary. The, the math, for whatever reason, got worse. Um, maybe there was some variation, just you know, intergroup variation. Reading improved some, spelling didn't. And then the entrainment group outperformed the Ritalin by quite an amount. And, uh, and then you look at combined entrainment and stimulant, Ritalin and Adderall. The, 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 so you got stimulation on stimulation now. And the differences were very significant. This is uh, Michael Joyce's study. Now, Michael Joyce had a 10-station multiple system that we had made for him that so we could do 10 kids at a time. And this is on the, um, on the uh, TOVA. And of course, this is, this is uh, considered clinical if you're below the line. And you can see here, and this was now uh, roughly six weeks. It was uh, 30 participants, and I think it was 34 sessions on average. And we can see here that 100, bang on 100 for inattention. Impulsive list was actually less than normal. Who's going to complain about that? Reaction times, pretty close to norms, and variability, very, 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 very tight. Well, Herschel, too, remember? You guys know Herschel? Because he was doing his HEG stuff, and he had also come across research showing that entrainment, particularly audio or visual entrainment, increases cerebral blood flow. He crunched this and he showed me these numbers. And he looked at studies Rossiter, Kaiser, and Othmer, New Vision School. Uh, Linda Th the Thompsons, Rossiter and Levac, Kaiser again. And then this is Michael in two schools in Minnesota. And his TOVA gains per session were better than all those neurofeedback studies. And he was treating 10 kids at a time. So talk about cost benefit to the education system. And so anyway, we're kind of proud of that graph and thankful to Herschel for putting that together for us. So Michael did another study, and he looked at uh, 200 children from seven schools, and he rated them. And you can see here um, the BDS scale measures anxiety, depression, hyperactivity, and inattention, and 10 is, is are normed. And you can see how much the kids improved. Again, roughly about 30 sessions. 
And on the Slauson oral reading, uh, most of these kids from grade one to grade 11 improved by about a year in six to eight weeks that the study ran. Uh, so it's very significant reading improvements as well. And of course, reading is, is critical in school. This is our uh, Beck depression. This is our SAD study. This is Beck. These are the controls on Beck depression as we roll into winter, right? This is on, this is on a placebo, had some improvement, and then on 20 hertz, so we're inhibiting that 10 hertz alpha. And the whole group was no longer, uh, uh, they were all complete, the whole group average was under depressed on the, based on the BDI. This is Victor's study out of Germany, uh, Victor Werscher, and just in one session, he was looking at the differences for concentration and for memory, and this is the concentration measure here. And he tried, uh, tried them on beta SMR, and he also tried them on alpha. And we can see here, compared to controls, um, the entrainment group had major improvements. This is one session, okay, just one compared to the controls, with the beta SMR being a little better, more effective for concentration than the alpha is. Then on the memory, the controls actually got worse on the memory, and you can see here actually alpha was better for memory, for consolidating memory than beta SMR was. But nonetheless, very significant results, and that's just one session. Uh, this was another follow-up study in a sense that um, <coughs> Michael Telch did this study at the U of T in Austin. And uh, he look, this, is, uh, wait, this is looking at worry in college students in Austin. This is weightless controls who are served as our, as our reference point. Uh, expressive writing, worry exposure, and entrainment using a depression protocol, that alpha beta one. And entrainment was more effective than the other techniques. The other thing is though, is that when, it looks at, when you look at um, adherence to treatment, people who used entrainment were much more willing to use it than people who were doing expressive writing or worry exposure. So had good adherence. When you look at dropouts, it had the least dropout. So there's a lot of things about entrainment that really you know, shine nicely. As we age, our cerebral blood flow goes down. But entrainment boosts cerebral blood flow. And this is showing actually it peaks at 7.8 hertz. This is Fox and Rakeley's work. Um, and uh, which is the Schumann resonance of the Earth, strangely enough. And if you give them a, what's called a beta SMR program, now this is looking at, a, at, an, at a, a, an editor where we actually design our, this, the protocols on. And we're giving them beta on the right sides to suppress, uh, boost beta and suppress alpha on the left. And we're giving them SMR on the left fields to suppress the SMR, I mean enhance SMR and reduce theta on the right. And with those results, this was Budzinski's study. These are the percentage of people, actually, sorry, he, did, he gave them a randomized version of that between 9 and 22 hertz. And these were the people who, percentage of people who improved. And also, and this is on the microcog, but look at this. The, this is the degree to which they improved in the microcog. Now, a lot of seniors really have spatial issues as they age. And, and risk of falling goes up and so on. So we did another study about a year later on 80 seniors uh, with a, a student I had hired, and uh, we look at the geriatric depression scale on the controls and on the, the people getting entrainment. Uh, this was four weeks and eight weeks. Uh, the depression dropped you know, right away. And balance mean score went up, and, and it was reducing their risk of falling at the same time. So that was also another uh, good outcome from that. Roughly, these are most of the studies, I think, that probably have been done on entrainment over the years, not including just pure physiological stuff, but this is like equating you know, mental performance and subjective experiences with it, uh, clinical uh, attributes with entrainment. Uh, okay, and some people who've uh, done well, uh, athletes have done well, uh, so on, the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs were using it, and they had much better win-loss ratio while they were using it, and then they, they, then they let the psychologist go, and they're their win-loss hasn't been so good since. But uh, so anyway, that ent entrainment appears to relax the body and mind, but it stimulates the structure of the brain itself is what it, it appears to do.